All right, everybody, welcome back. This is Lecture 25, Part 1. Uh, in Lecture 25, we're going to be talking about uh, several changes in gaming culture uh, that happened in the period between 2005 2012. And here in Part 1, we're going to talk about the Supreme Court case Brown versus EMA, which was the court case that would decide whether or not video games are, in fact, free speech. So in 2005, a California state senator, Leland Yee, sponsored a state law to regulate the content of quote-unquote violent video games. And according to this law, violent games could not be sold to anyone under 18, and any game classified as violent would have to require an identification sticker beyond the traditional ESRB ratings. Um, the law was designed to get around First Amendment concerns by treating violence as obscene. Remember, obscene speech is not protected by the First Amendment. So, as you might imagine, this law, I believe, was passed by the State Assembly and signed into law, and immediately the Entertainment Software Association, along with the Entertainment Merchants Association, filed suit against it in court. Fun fact, uh, Leland Yi, a few years later, was in fact convicted of bribery and gun running, so um, not really sure what was going on there, but for in our, in our context, he instigates the law, he gets the law rolling that it's going to decide whether or not video games are free speech. So the case works its way through the federal court system, and just in case you're not familiar with that, it starts, a case is filed in federal district court, then it goes to appeals court, and then it can be appealed all the way to the Supreme Court, which has the final say. So this case worked its way through the federal court system at the both at the district and appeals level, this law was unconstitutional, right? The, the government does not have, the government has to sort of have a very compelling case to regulate speech. But video games had never been classified as free speech the way movies and books and art had been uh, so documented. So the Supreme Court would hear this case in 2009 and then render their verdict in 2011. And here's the quote from the majority opinion of the Supreme Court in Brown versus EMA. Like the protected books, plays, and movies that preceded them, video games communicate ideas and even social messages through many familiar literary devices, such as characters, dialogue, plot, and music, and through features distinctive to the medium, such as the player's interaction with the virtual world. That suffices to confer First Amendment protection. And that is really critical for the video game industry. Once video games are legally protected free speech, it solves a lot of issues for, for the industry as a whole, okay? Basically, to regulate the content of video games in the United States now requires you to uh, somehow go to court and prove that a video game has no artistic, literary, or scientific value whatsoever, and that it's only designed to appeal to the pre interest, kind of the old Miller test we talked about way back at the beginning of the semester when we talked about how the First Amendment works. So this case was decided 7-2 to by the Supreme Court. And again, games can still be regulated, but you're going to have to prove in a court of law that the video game is obscene. And that is very difficult to do. These kind of cases almost never come to trial. It's very rare in the modern era that, we, that anybody tries to get anything labeled obscene. It's almost impossible. Keep in mind that video games are a digital medium, right? They're distributed over the internet. They don't really have a location-based uh, thing so the community definition used by the Miller test doesn't work very well but the upshot of all of this is that as of 2011 video games are free speech which means the barrier for, for government regulation of them is incredibly high and very unlikely to stand up in court so the video game industry at this point uh, is treated with the same uh, legal protections as movies books tv shows uh, plays all other kinds of art and that's a big step forward for the video game industry. So it's really weird to think that video games have only been legally defined free speech for less than a decade at this point. But that's sort of how long it took for video games to get that same recognition and same protection that is granted to books and movies and other works of art. So that's it for part one. Uh, we'll be back with part two in just a minute and we'll see you there.